Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible study called Covenant Correction. So it's going to be called Covenant Correction. So we're just going to delve in to what covenant we're actually under. Are we under the old Mosaic law? Are, are, are we under the, the contract or the pact that was done under Christ? Now, let's start this Bible study by defining covenant. Covenant is a contract. It's a mutual agreement between two parties or between two people, two or more people. So it's a contract, effectively a contract. It's a mutual pact between two or more people. So Israel had two covenants or two contracts or two pacts between uh, God and Israel, right? So one covenant was via the prophet Moses and the second covenant was via Christ, right? So the first one, Moses was the mediator between God and Israel and the second covenant, Christ was the mediator between God and Israel. And obviously Christ being the king, being the second to God, he had his legion of prophets to orchestrate or to impose or to illustrate <laughs> or to introduce the second covenant or the second pact or the second contract. But I'm going to pull out a few scriptures in the Bible to hopefully help you with knowing whether Christ fulfilled the law of Moses or he didn't. Or, or to just give a, a, a little bit of a history behind it to hopefully help edify you. All right. So let's read John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So thy word is truth, right? So you've got to sanctify them through thy truth. So, so you, that something is sanctified or approved by the truth. And thy word is truth. The word is the truth, right? Let's also read another scripture, which the Lord taught as he was walking this earth. And I'm going to go to, i going to find it first. So we're going to go to John 8 and we're going to read from 31 to 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So let's read it again. Then said Jesus to, to those Jews which believed on him, right? Because Christ was talking to the Jews first, then the Gentiles. The Gentiles mean in the northern kingdom or the ten tribes. Ye, if ye continue in my word, and ye are my disciples in, indeed. So he was speaking to them and saying, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. And ye shall know the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth always sets you free. It takes, it breaks you from bondage, and it sets you free. So let's now go to Matthew 5. So let's go, now go to Matthew 5. And we're going to read from 16 to 32. So we're now going to read what Christ actually fulfilled. What, what he, we're now going to come to the conclusion of what was fulfilled and what is left for us to do. Right. So let's read from Matthew 5 and we're going to read from 16 to. Um, I'm not going to read all of these scriptures, actually. So I'm just going to read from 16 to possibly 24. Here, ready, go. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The good works meaning your obedience. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, right? So Christ is saying you must let your light so shine so the whole world can see you. You, you, you illuminate, illuminate righteousness, goodness, Right. That the whole world can follow. So it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. It means see your uh, your truth. Right. May see your obedience, may see 
your spirit and how much it has changed and glorify your father which is in heaven you glorify God which is in heaven right by your righteous behavior your righteous spirit think not that I've come to destroy the law so Christ is saying think not that I've come to destroy the law so he didn't come to destroy the laws of Moses think the law just means the law of Moses or the prophets or the prophets in the old testament right what the prophets came to say, Isaiah, um, you, you could go on and on and on and on and on. You could go on to Isaiah, you could go on to Noah, etc., etc., etc. I have, I have, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He didn't come to destroy the Old Testament. That's what he's getting at. He didn't come to destroy the Old Covenant, right? But he came to fulfill it. He came to fulfill it. Right. Why? Because we had to fulfill the old covenant. Right. So he didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. For verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass. So verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. For verily I say unto you till F heaven and earth pass. So heaven and earth uh, till heaven and earth pass. Uh, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So all of the law needed to be fulfilled, right? So that's what he's, he's saying here. So all of the all of the old Mosaic law needed to be fulfilled. Let's read it again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled so all of the law should be fulfilled whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments so now he's talking about the least commandments that are that he's now telling you that you need to fulfill now right he's fulfilled his end of the bargain now you need to fulfill yours Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoso shall do and teach them the same shall be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. So there's new commandments that you have to follow. For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall have no case to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So your righteousness must exceed the scribes and the Pharisees that were giving Christ a very hard time and the prophets too. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old, thou shall not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whoso, whoso is, is angry with thy brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say that thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thou, brother, art against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, for he be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Right, so that's going into some of the moral law that you, that you had to follow, right? So some of them, a lot of it was based on the Old Testament, but, lot, but some of them have adjustments, right? They have adjustments in the New Covenant, right? So... Let's go back up to 18 again, because this always causes confusion. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. So let's read from 17. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He came to fulfill the old Mosaic law. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All needed to be fulfilled, and he did it on the cross. Whosoever therefore... So, but but however however you still have to is this this is not where you don't have to fulfill no law laws need still need to be fulfilled so we said uh, whos whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven so, so he's now going to the laws that you still have to follow in the new testament so these are the law that you now need to fulfill right in the new covenant because Christ did the hardest part which was for, to fulfill the old schoolmaster right so let's now go to Luke let's go to Luke 24 we're going to Luke 24 we're going to Luke 24 
and we're going to read from 44 to 47. So we're reading Luke 24 and we're reading from 44 to 47. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, which I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Right. So this is what was fulfilled. Let's read again. And he said unto them, These are the, this is what Christ fulfilled. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, which I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, that were written in the law of Moses, so everything needed to be done. You couldn't do a halfway house. That's why Israel got into trouble, right? Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, the prophets that came to talk, to teach the laws and to, and to give Israel uh, the commandments of Christ and to give Israel edification. And in the Psalms, in Psalms is in the Old Testament concerning me, concerning Christ. <laughs> right. So all needed to be fulfilled. That's why Christ had to come and fulfill it on the cross. Right. So let's now go to. So that covers Matthew 5. So Luke 24 covers Matthew 5 and it kind of clears it up. Right. Because now we understand what Christ came to fulfill. Now, it, it now it is that wasn't just left at that. You know, you still have a law to fulfill, which is the new covenant. And then Christ was now telling you what was what was still yet to be fulfilled. Right. So what 44 is saying is that Christ came to fulfill the law. Right. He came to fulfill the laws of Moses. He came to fulfill whatever the prophets were sent to preach, right? So he came to fulfill the old Mosaic law where they were prophesying that Christ will come and do this and he will come and do that. Well, they didn't actually say his name. I mean, the Most High never mentions the word Christ, but it was prophesied that the Messiah will come, right? To issue a new covenant to save Israel, right? So everything that all those prophets prophesied, in the Old Testament, all the work that they did in the Old Testament and all the work that they prophesied in the New Testament and obviously in the New Testament, the prophets in the New Testament too, right? And concerning the, the Psalms, you know, the Psalms that were written by King David, right? All of those things need to be fulfilled. So all of it needed to be fulfilled. But Christ fulfilled his end of the bargain. Now we need to fulfill ours. So let's go back into uh, the Old Testament and let's pull out a cup, a few scriptures where where the Lord is is speaking about his law. Right. Because the Most High was very, very eloquent, as always, <laughs> about Israel following his laws because he didn't like when you didn't follow his laws. Right. The Lord, the Most High did not like did not like it when Israel ignored his laws, right? But let's, let's, let's read about, let's read the beginning. So let's read Exodus 24 when these laws were given. So we're reading Exodus 24 and we're going to read from 12 to 18. So we're reading Exodus 24 and we're reading from 12 to 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So so Israel got married to the Most High and then the Most High is now stamping his authority on us by giving us his laws, giving Israel his laws. The Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God and he said unto the elders tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you and behold Aaron and her are with you if any man have any matters to do let him come unto them and Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days and seventh day he called unto Moses out the midst of the cloud and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on, on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel so this goes into a chariot right it was a so-called UFO and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights so, so Moses was in the mountain 
for 40 days and 40 nights while he was hearing about the law that the Most High was teaching him. So let's now go to Deuteronomy 28 because the Most High put a heavy, heavy price on his law. He wanted his law to be followed. Just like a husband, when you when you get a new wife, you know, you, you tell her what you want to do when you marry her, right? Obviously, you tell her before, you know, look, this is what I like and this is what I don't like. And when she's living with you, you know, you give her, you tell her all the things that you like and what you don't like. And, and because she's living with you now, she's now your help me in your home. So you could now detail the things that you really want. You stamp your authority upon her because she's now your wife, right? She's no longer, you're no longer courting her. You are now married, right? So let's read Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to read uh, one, two, two. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, and that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the Most High put a heavy price on his laws. Right. So we set this read again. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently on the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So we were to be set upon all nations upon the earth. So that was the whole point of him um, only dealing with Israel Two, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord by God. So there was blessings for following the Most High's laws. So let's read Deuteronomy 30 and we're going to read from 1 to 3. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord thy God had driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and thou shalt obey his voice according to all that I commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, and all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that when that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Right, so, so let's read, uh, da, 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 let's read from one again. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse. So this is when Israel has now accepted uh, the curse, right? Which I have set before you. So he set the blessings and the curse in Deuteronomy 28. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. So they, Israel has accepted the curse. Whether the Lord thy God had driven thee and shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children and with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And then the Lord thy God will turn. So if you if shall return to the Lord thy God, right, and obey his voice. So how are we now turning to Lord thy God and obeying his voice by following Christ? right that's why christ had to come down and switch the law up right according to all that i command thee this day thy and thy children and with all thine heart and with all thy soul right and that then the lord thy god will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee he would have compassion upon you and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the lord thy god has scattered thee Right, so let's read two again. And shall return unto the Lord thy God. So you've got to return and shall obey his voice. You've got to obey the voice of God according to all that I commanded thee this day. And thou and thy children and all thine heart and with all thy soul. And then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Right, so we're now on the Christ, right? So we have to follow the laws that were given to Christ. Back Back in the time of the Deuteronomy time, you know, you had the laws that, that were the old covenant, right, of which Israel didn't follow, right? We didn't follow it. So therefore, we ended up in captivity, slavery and colonialism, right? So he had to send Christ to to give us a new covenant, right, because the old one didn't work, <laughs> right? Obviously, it didn't work. So now we had to switch it up to a heart covenant. Now, let's go to... Uh, Galatians 3, I'll be reading from 18 to 26. So here, ready, go. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So let's, so as we go along, I'll, I'll explain bits. So for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of a promise, 
but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So, so God uh, promised Abraham that that he will give uh, his nation the kingdom. Right? Let's carry on. Wherefore then severeth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So so it's saying here, wherefore then sever it the law. It was added because of transgressions. So the law was added because of transgressions, because of people just doing whatever they want to do. Right? Evil. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Right? So, the, so, so obviously the promise was made to Israel, to the remnant of Israel. But it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So I suppose it's referring to Moses, the mediator. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Right, let's read that again because that's power packed. Is the law then against the promises of God? Right, because the law didn't work, right? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. So in other words, the law didn't work the way how it was supposed to work, right? But then again, God already knew why he gave the law. He didn't He didn't give the law for it to work, uh, the, you know, forever. You know, he gave it for a particular season, right? And he knew that Israel will trip up on the law, right? So let's let's carry on. Uh, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture's heart concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So it was given all for Israel to get to this stage where Christ had to come down. Right. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. So before Christ came, we were kept under the laws of Moses, shut up unto the faith. So we didn't have the faith of Christ, which should afterwards be revealed. So it was to be revealed later on. So it was prophesied to the prophets that Christ will come to reveal the faith or to or to give a better covenant. 24 wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto christ the law the most high used the harsh law to bring us to christ to bring us to the faith that we might be justified by faith so that we can be justified by christ our belief in christ profound belief in christ 25 but after the faith is come we are no longer under a schoolmaster so after after christ has come to fulfill the laws of Moses, we are no longer under that harsh schoolmaster of the Old Testament. But after the fate is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. But ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we're no longer under the laws of Moses. And that, and that law had to be taken out of the way because it separated Israel as well. That as well. So therefore, Christ was always prophesied to come because the law, the, the laws of Moses was not meant to last forever. Right. It was always meant to have an end date to it. And the end date was Christ coming to fulfill it. Right. And then usher in the new covenant, which is a better covenant. Right. It's the new beginnings of Israel, the new relationship, the new grace, the new faith brought by Christ. OK, so let's now go to. Romans 15 and we'll read from 1 to 6. Now what we need is from 4 to 6 but to give context we'll just read from 1. So we read in Romans 15 read from 1 to 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbour for his good to edification. For even Christ blessed not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Right. So let's read that bit again. Right. Let's listen very carefully to what's saying. Let's read from one again. 
We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. So not to be a narcissist, not to be selfish, not to aggrandize yourself. Let every one of us please his neighbor. You've got to, you've got to please the people of your own people. You've got, to, you've got to please your brother and your sister, which is someone of your own people. That's your neighbor. But he's good to edification. But even Christ pleased not himself. Christ didn't please himself because he sacrificed himself for the whole nation of Israel. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whosoever, for whosoever things were written aforetime were fallen for our learning. Right. So Paul was still was still under the well, well to a certain extent, Israel was still under the curse. Right. Now the. Now the God of patience and, consol and consolation grants you to be like minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. Right. So we so we broke the law. So we were under the, cur the curse. We broke the laws. We we're under the curse. And now Christ is walking us back. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father our Lord Jesus Christ. And now it's all been rolled back to Christ right so it's to so the God of patience and consol consolation so it's the God of patience and consolation which is a God of patience and comfort because consolation just means comfort you're comforting someone right so obviously the Lord comforted Israel by sending giving Israel another chance and by sending Christ to ultimately Give Israel salvation, give Israel faith, give give Israel hope and ultimately salvation. So the, the God of patience and reconciliation we will say reconciliation. So the God of patience and reconciliation grants you to be like minded one towards another. So you're one mind and one mouth where you glorify God. Right. So. OK, so I'm not going to go anywhere else with that. All I'm all is left to say is when you're in the Christian church and you're, you know, you're yawning your head off on a Sunday and you're thinking, oh, I'm born. <sighs> then you dream a little bit, then you wake up, then you go back to dreaming again and you wake up and the pastor's still preaching. <laughs> and then you're thinking, oh, when is it time to go home? You know, and then you think, oh, another song. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that always wakes me up, makes me feel good. Send me home on a high. <laughs> right <laughs> what the what the, when you get to that stage where things are so stagnant you know nothing is going anywhere your relationship with God is not going anywhere and you feel the uh, overwhelming need to want to do wickedness right to do wicked things to fornicate to smoke weed to go to nightclubs just to do the vilest things to go to strip clubs you know you you, you feel that your your faith is withering Right. Then you find this thing called the truth and then you realize, oh, you mean all those years I was an Israelite. I was reading about my people in the Bible. And the Lord says, yeah. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, this is the truth. Wow. But then you think, oh, but I would really love to join the church. So then you start looking for a, a, an Israelite church and then you find an Israelite church and then boom, you jump out of the fire and then you, it slams you back into the flame. Right? You jump out of the frying pan. It's sizzling in the frying pan. And then you jump, boom, right back into the furnace. So you move from the so-called Christian church, right? Because being a Christian is not a bad thing. You know, <laughs> being a Christian just means you're anointed to follow Christ. That's all it means, right? But so you jump from the Christian church, the so-called Christian church. And then you go to the Israelite church and boom, they put you back under Moses. Right. They put you back under 618 laws. They put you under laws that you didn't even ex know existed in the Bible. You're like, huh? How am I going to do that? I can't go to Jerusalem. How am I going to do Passover? How am I going to do this? I, I need to wear fringes every day. What? Right. They put you back under 618 laws and then you're shaking your head thinking, surely this can't be true. Right. But then you look around for the, for the churches with the loudest voices and they all put you back under Moses. But then they claim that they're following the law, but they're not following the law because of their the things that they say out of their mouth. Their mouth alone and their attitude alone makes you realize they're not really following the laws. So I just thought I'd just add that on there. 
right? So it's very important. The Bible is very clear. It says that you should study to show yourself approved. A good workman, a good, 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 good workman need not be shamed, be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So your relationship with Christ should be constantly going through the scriptures and rightly dividing the word of truth and because you didn't rightly divide the word of truth you allowed your relationship with Christ to be stagnant whereby you're falling asleep when you should be wide awake right because you are in charge of your mind of your heart so you need to actually circumcise your heart to follow God and how are you going to do that if you're in a place that is making you fall asleep right anyhow the Bible is very clear. You should rightly divide the word of truth. And that's what we all need to do constantly. It doesn't matter how much truth you think you know. You're supposed to still be searching, searching the scriptures to, to verify what you, actually, uh, what you actually believe is exactly the truth. And in, in that way, you get edified and you can edify others. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to end it here. Shalom.